Hey guys, today we're back with another pistol review. And today on the channel, we'll be reviewing the Canic TP9SF Elite. Stay tuned for this one. <laughs> Alright guys, we're back. Once again, today we're going to be reviewing the Canic TP9SF Elite. This is uh, one of the more popular uh, Canics on the market. Uh, Canic has been a company now that's been coming up for a while. We'll go ahead and safety check it as you can see. Mag is empty, gun is unloaded, safety finger point check, and a little dirty, but it is safe. So, go ahead and get on with the review. Uh, like I said, Canic has been a uh, gun company that's been upcoming for the last five, uh, six years, something like that. Uh, they have maybe been a while, uh, around a little bit while or more longer than that, but they are a uh, one's becoming a lot more prominent in uh, self-defense handguns, uh, competition handguns, just to name a few. And I'm starting to see more of them. This is actually the first Canic I've ever physically shot or uh, <coughs> you know reviewed on the channel. And I'm glad I got the chance to. I uh, actually got this gun uh, lent to me to do a review on, and I appreciate that. But uh, it's going to give you all my thoughts about it. So uh, price point on these guns, MSRP on Canic's website is $399. So it's going to be putting you in the same uh, position buying this new as about around a uh, Glock 19 Gen 4, uh, Gen 3, somewhere around there in normal times, uh, not Corona times, because we all know how everything's going right now. But I'd like to keep this video relevant for later just in case if this stuff finally blows ever blows over but you know it's going to be putting you in the same uh, position as a used Glock. Uh, that being said, new gun versus used Glock but we'll get into that a little bit later. So this pistol in itself is uh, very interesting. It kind of does remind you of the Glock 19 with the 4 inch barrel 15 plus 1 round of magazine. But uh, the main differences between this one and some Glocks I've seen is that this one's trigger is actually very, very well. So you have a tiny bit of take up, which is really not anything. I think it's just catching into itself. And then once you hit that wall, it really does feel like a competition pistol, being dead honest with you guys. Uh, it's going very accurate. Uh, what I have shot with it, uh, everywhere I was aiming, even speed shooting, I was hitting right on target, and I actually shot with this gun a lot better than I thought I was going to. A uh, few things with this gun, it actually has uh, a front fiber optic sight that is very small, so you can get some very pinpoint accurate uh, shots with it, which I like that a lot. Every single one of my guns, even if it's my carry Glock 34, has the fiber optic front sight because I'd rather have uh, more precise shots than a uh, Gun with night sights on it if I'm gonna have a light in general on it already. This gun has a uh, Picatinny rail on the bottom so you can attach lights, lasers, anything you want to. Uh, it is also ambidextrous. You can uh, put the slide release on the other side if you need to, if you're left-handed. Uh, that being said also, it also has the slide catch, slide release on the right-hand side. So if you wanna shoot left-handed and slide release, you can. Has the takedown pins on both sides also. So this is pretty much a fully ambidextrous gun, and I like that because we have a lot of uh, left-handed shooters out there. This gun uh, from factory will come with a different back strap if you want to change that out. Should come with two mags, box, and everything from factory. I didn't get that uh, whenever I was uh, whenever I picked up the gun to review. This is all I have, so we're just going to go from this. But I thought you would all would like to know uh, what all actually comes with it from factory. But like I said earlier, this gun has possibly the best single act or uh, primer strike trigger that I've ever felt in any uh, primer strike handguns because like uh, whenever you're pulling it like I said a minute ago it very it has a very minimum take up to it which you just have to get used to but once you hit that wall it's about the same pull as the 1911 if that means anything to you all uh, but Striker fired uh, pistols all around, you know, are known to not really have that good of a trigger. Uh, I've kind of got used to a Glock and I can feel how a Glock breaks. I know how they break and that's how I train with Glocks. But, uh, you know, once you get a different striker fired uh, handgun in your hand and you're trying to get used to that trigger, it kind of throws you off a little bit if you're used to Glock. But I've uh, adapted to this one's trigger very, very easily. And once I figured out how it works, how uh, everything in it works, and like 
whenever you actually hit that wall is whenever you're getting ready to pull it. It's very, very light. I'd say possibly maybe even four pounds, three and a half pounds, something like that. That's what it feels like to me. It's might even be less than three and a half pounds, guys, being dead honest with you. But uh, very, very nice trigger in it overall. And I don't know if it's just because of how good the trigger was, but uh, I shot this gun a lot better than I was expecting it to. Uh, big point also, safety point anyway, it has a loaded uh, chamber indicator, which it's, uh, it's actually more of a loaded chamber indicator up here, but it shows red if you have uh, the uh, trigger in line to actually be able to pull to strike the primer to go off. So whenever you pull the trigger, if there's nothing in it, the red will not show up. But if you have it ready to go off, the uh, red will show off, so you can check that if you want to make sure that you're, you are got one in the chamber. Also, like I said, it's got the indicator on top of it to show if it is uh, loaded or not, but I always like to press check my guns like that. It also has a serration here on the front that if you would like to press check it. But uh, a few downsides of this gun, because you know, guys, I'm always trying to be dead honest with you. Uh, the serrations on the grip, I feel, should have been a little bit better. It's got some uh, bumps up here on front that help you. The gun didn't come out of my hand any time today. It didn't uh, slide out of my hand or, you know, get to where I would need to reposition my hand, if that is what I'm trying to say. But, uh, you know, I feel like it could be a tad bit more aggressive. Uh, some people don't like aggressive grips. I do. But uh, that's one thing that I didn't like about it. And really, guys, I mean, I was looking all around, and even the grip on this feels very well. And that's something else that you see on a lot of upcoming pistols that they don't really have the grip down to where people would enjoy it that much. But now this one right here fits my hand perfect. And uh, a Glock 19, I've got bigger hands and, and the Glock 19 really don't fit my hand that well, but this is the same size as it. And I can get a pretty well full uh, hand grip on it and it feels very well. Whenever I had first got the gun, the mag was not fully dropping, but now uh, the mag seems to be dropping free. Uh, I'm not really sure how many rounds have been through this gun whenever I got it, but now that it has uh, wore itself a little bit, mags are free dropping, so I like that. But uh, besides that, though, guys, right from the factory where the sights are is where exactly it's hitting, so I always like that, not having to adjust the sights any. Uh, slide catch, slide release is easy to manipulate. Very uh, easy to let go if you all train like that. If you all train like where you have to pretty much uh, slide it back and let it go. It's still fine there, but the grip uh, serrations or the serrations on the back of the slide are very aggressive. It's easy to get a good hold on them. Don't have to worry about your hand slipping off or anything. So I like that. Polymer guide rod, or actually no, that's metal guide rod. Sorry, it's just painted black. I thought it was polymer. So I like uh, metal guide rods in itself too. Uh, even, even though polymer guide rods really have seen no bad uh, you know, using them, I guess you would say. Like, I mean, I've had until how many blocks with polymer, uh, polymer guide rods in them and none of them's ever given me a problem. I still like uh, metal guide rods in a handgun. But now, uh, this one works perfect, guys. Never had a single failure, never had a single uh, failure to extract, failure to feed, anything like that. It's just a pistol that works really well. But one of the only things about it is that in this price point, you're looking at a used Glock. Uh, normally these pistols run used about around three hundred dollars uh, that's in normal times not corona times now they're these right here from what I can tell are running uh, about around four hundred dollars still even used because these are very popular pistols and they work very well and that's a uh, you know a name kind of speaks for itself in some points but a name can also hurt the company if it's not very well known it won't be as uh, well recognized I guess you would say if you're in a gun store and you see Canik, and you see Glock, and well, everybody knows Glock, everybody knows Smith, everybody knows Colt, somebody's more likely to pick up the Colt, Smith, or Glock and play with them a little bit more than whenever they see a Canik because it's not a name that is as well known as, say, Glock, Smith & Wesson, Sig, anything like that. And uh, once these guns, well, I mean, they're already now starting to get big in competitions and everything, and I think once people start realizing how well of a gun the Canik is actually making, uh, with this one right here anyway, it's, it's a very great gun, but with, once people see how well these guns are actually built and how well they function, how well they actually shoot and the accuracy of them, 
I think uh, Canik will be a very well upcoming uh, firearms company. But like before I reviewed this gun, I never really even had any kind of uh, initiative to go and even uh, check out a Canik to even possibly own or shoot one day to review to you all. But after I was laying this gun to review, it's changed my mind on this, uh, on this firearm in general. It's just coming in, I wasn't expecting as much out of this gun as I received. And that's what's kind of left me in shock with this one is how well it actually shot how well the accuracy was of it and how it just felt in my hand while shooting. And uh, coming out of this review, this is really a very nice gun and one that I would highly recommend, even possibly depending on, you know, where you can find this at and what price point, uh, even maybe even picking it over a Glock in a certain standpoints if you get it cheap enough, you know what I mean? But now guys, uh, if you have any questions or comments about the Canik, please leave them in the uh, comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. But yeah, coming out of this, I really like this firearm and it has very well surprised me and I 100% recommend it if you would like to check one of these out. You guys, appreciate y'all viewing. Like and subscribe for more gun reviews and I'll see y'all in the next video.